Hey there, and welcome back to Melanie Loves Death Metal. Finally here, my top 10 death metal albums of 2023. I made this into a five-part series. The other four videos are out. Links in the description where you can watch them. Uh, but this is officially my top 10 ranked, my, my favorite albums of this year. Uh, and let's go ahead and get started. The first one came out very early into the year, but it has stuck with me ever since it came out, and that is Ahab with the Choral Tombs. Uh, the band is out of Germany, and this is a funeral death doom band, uh, and they do it in a way of not your average funeral death doom, if you know what I mean. Uh, this is their three, four, fifth full length album. I was a huge fan of their last album that came out in 2015. So it has been a while since they've released an album, which was the boats of the Glenn Carrig. Uh, but this one is by far my favorite album for them to come out so far. They, they've exceeded my expectations in regards to this release. Uh, this is out on Napalm Records. Um, and what you get with this album is a mixed bag of funeral death doom you get really good death doom you get really good funeral death doom and then you get some cinematic theatrical clean vocals that remind me a bit of typo negative um and they just incorporate everything together it is a very well written album and yes it has a theme as you can see of under the sea uh, <laughs> there uh, but again this has been a fantastic album i absolutely love this album and like I said, it came out very early into the year. I think it was February. Oh no, it was January. So yeah, this was one of the first releases to come out this year that truly has stuck with me that I have listened to all year round and have said this is one of my favorite albums to come out. And that has that has held true up until this day. So if you haven't heard this yet, definitely check it out, especially if you're a Funeral Death Doom fan. Uh, and if you don't mind, sometimes every once in a while, clean vocals come in here and there. Uh, it is a very, very good album. Super engaging. I don't get bored of listening to this at all. Um, and it's just all around a, a very, very good album. I think I've said it like 100 times now. So that is Ahab with the Coral Tombs. At number 10 is, of course, oh no, I messed up my vinyl. I put them the wrong way. Um, is, of course, the iconic Outer Heaven with Infinite Psychic deaths uh so this is probably absolutely no surprise to anybody that this is on my top 10 i absolutely love outer heaven i have mentioned that this is my favorite one of my favorite modern death metal bands to be out right now um they are from the u.s and this is their second full-length album out on relapse records um this album is a lot of things uh that is not just straightforward death metal and they have a lot of features on here there's jr hayes stephen tucker and then on bass for this album is derek vala or vela vela vala who is of uh, two mold and also dream on ending so uh it is a very very good death metal album i absolutely loved it the minute it came out the hype sticker is pretty much um on par for for what this album is, a glorious, powerful, unrelenting, heavy fucking metal. I mean, it's heavy fucking death metal. Um, Outer Heaven is very unique to me in regards to their sound. Uh, it is a pretty much, um, it is a, it's not necessarily a straightforward death metal sound to me. They have a little bit more uniqueness in regards to how their vocal style is. Uh, but overall, it's a riff machine. Um, and I absolutely love this album. Uh, I think it, is by far better than their last and i really loved their last album rebels of eternal decay so i'm really excited to see where this band goes from here uh, i feel like all they can do is just keep going up and keep making great albums so this is outer heaven infinite psychic deaths okay at number eight this is probably the one thing that will surprise a lot of people and that is fuming mouth with last day of sun so technically, I guess you want to say not a death metal album because this is pretty much, well, no. Okay, it's a death metal album, but they definitely still have that metallic hardcore sound infused into this. This is by far a more death metal album than their last album that they put out. Uh, Fuming Mouth is kind of the um, different one that people probably didn't expect me to fall in love with this year. Uh, the band is out of the U.S. and this is their second full-length album. Um, there's definitely more of that, like crust punk sound, uh, in their, in their music as well. Uh, so this album 
really took me by surprise. I really did like The Grand Descent that came out in 2019, and, and I haven't listened to it nearly as much as I did when it first came out. That is very much a mood album for me. I'm not always in the mood for that metallic or that hardcore style of music, but this album is a lot different to me. It sounds a lot different than their last album, and they've added that layer of death metal in here that I really, really enjoy. Outside of the sound and how that's kind of progressed and changed for me, the overall theme of this album and what went into writing it and what went into Mark's uh, journey with cancer and a lot of those elements that went into this album make it a much more personable and um, listen for me that I that I clicked with. Um, I did a re review of this in Heavy Metallurgy and I talked about how I've had a lot of um, struggles with cancer in regards to losing people to it and I lost my best friend to brain cancer eight years ago. Uh, so a lot of the things that Mark has been going on and talking about on podcasts, like he was just on the Garza podcast, which was a really good video. You should watch that. And other interviews that he's done and just overall has talked about it in the lyrical process of this and like what the song means and just everything pretty much really connected with me. And I think that that's why this album just clicked as soon as I heard it. Uh, there's that that emotional, personal connection to it. Outside of that, some of my favorite songs are on here, and I do listen to this album a lot. Um, the, the album starts off incredibly heavy with Out of Time, um, and then it just, it's relentless throughout the whole entire album. So if you're into that more of that hardcore style of music and, and you like that it's kind of mixed in with death metal, you'll really enjoy this. I like his vocals on this. They're a little bit more raspier and dirtier sounding compared to the last album that they put out. Um, and this has just been a very good progression for me. And, and, and I'm a huge fan of this band now. So probably the left ball, the one that came out of left field that you didn't expect to be on this year on list, but check this out. It is also out on Nuclear Blast Records. So it's, it's accessible. You can find it. Okay, at number seven. No, that was number seven. No, this is number seven. At number seven is Fires in the Distance, Air Not Meant For Us. Uh, this is an, uh, admittedly a last minute ad um, and has been one, has, oh God, this album. This album came out of nowhere for me. Um, I found it on the Decibel Top 40. I mentioned when I reacted to that that I didn't know this band and I hadn't listened to it, but I had seen this album cover and so I recognized it. Well, ever since that day, and that's it's been over a month now, or almost a month now, three weeks, I don't know. Um, I went back and listened to this and this blew me away uh, in regards to that melodic death doom um, element I, I definitely, pref you know, this is definitely a melodic death metal record with a lot of the, the death doom elements into it. Uh, it is very well written. They are very good musicians. Um, I love just the keyboards and everything else that is littered throughout this. The atmosphere is so pretty, I guess you could say, and dark at the same time. Um, and this is their, their third full length, no, sorry, their second full length album. Echoes from Deep November is one that I need to go back and listen to. Uh, the band is out of the U.S. and this is on Prosthetic Records. So again, this took me by surprise. I I definitely did slept on this all year. So, but from the moment that I first heard this to now, I think I've listened to this every single day. I've dug deep down into a lot of like the musical, like the compositions and trying to determine like what instruments they're using and all that stuff. And when I get like that with an album, that immediately becomes one of my favorite albums. I have a lot of albums where I do that too. And this is definitely going to be one of them. The other thing that I want to call out is that there is an instrumentational, instrumental, God, talking, uh, version of this on Bandcamp. And I really hope that they press it on like a CD or something because I, I love listening to that too. Um, if you haven't listened to this yet, check it out. There's been a lot of hype around this the last couple of months, and I think that that's very warranted. Um, the one good thing about Year and List is that you always find something that you didn't particularly know or think to listen to, and this was one of those. This was one of those, so I threw it in there. Absolutely one of the best albums to come out, in my opinion, this year, um, and definitely check it out if you have not heard it yet. At number six is Horrendous with Ontological Mysticism, or Mysterium, yeah, Mysterium, Mysticism, Mysterium. Um, okay, so 
this album, I had no expectations when I first heard it. Um, and that's simply just because I was not a fan of their last couple of records that they put out. Uh, it didn't really do much to for me at the time. Um, the band is out of the U.S. and this is their fifth full-length album. This is out on Season of Mist, so <clears throat> got that out of the way. Uh, but this is progressive death metal. Very progressive death metal. And the album cover alone made me want to listen to it so good job on that uh when it was being debuted on the release day i think season of mist put this on youtube about a couple of days before the release i went and listened to it and from the moment the second song what is it called chris couldn't be an easy song name um i'll i'll put it in text right here uh which by far is one of the best songs to come out this year uh, that completely roped me in. It is a little bit of a weird listen. There's a lot of weirdness in this album, I will say, especially on, you know, the end of side A within the, into side B, but it is that weird progressive death metal, that, that experimental progressive death metal that I absolutely love. A lot of the albums I listen to are like this. So this clicked with me immediately. Uh, so I know a lot of people have hyped this album and I think this was number one on Decibel and on a lot of people's lists. And I think that's definitely warranted. Um, I've seen some sort of uh, criticism about it being a little bit um, pretentious and I kind of don't think, I don't think that's what it is at all. Um, so I, I absolutely love this album. I think it is a very well written album. Uh, the guys are writing really good music. They are great musicians. They're, they're unique. Um, and again, it's not completely reinventing the wheel here, but there's a lot of, uh, differences and, and uniqueness into this that makes it not just a straightforward death metal album. I think this, the listenability of this is definitely one of those that'll last for a very long time and be considered one of those, uh, maybe cult classic albums. I don't know we'll see. Uh, but it is a fantastic album and I absolutely love it. And this is one that I've been listening to a ton this year. And I agree. It's one of the best to come out this year. Okay. We're getting to my top five. Now, these are my five favorite albums of the year. Full stop. This was not even hard to write up. As soon as I started thinking about making these videos, I immediately wrote out my top five and then I worked the rest of the way. Number five is Disguised Malignance with Entering the Gateways. Uh, this album came out of nowhere for me this year. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't see any promotional stuff about it. Nobody really had been chirping about it in my ear. And then it, it released and then people started sending it my way and saying, you have to listen to this. You're going to love this, especially if this is the type of death metal that you absolutely love. And that ended up being the truth. Uh, this came out, um, did I say Prosthetic Records? Yeah, it's on Prosthetic Records. It came out back in September, so it's been out for a while now. This is their first full-length album. The band is out of Finland. Um, Finnish death metal. And yeah, there's that classic Finnish death metal sound to this, but they also added a layer of the progressiveness in here. And it's not super progressive like Horrendous or the Tomb Mold album. Um, they've got a little bit of ambience and progress progressiveness in a couple of songs here. It mixes in really well and they do it really well. Um, it just, oh, it's so good. These guys are pretty young too, and they are very, very good uh, writers in terms of death metal. Um, it says on the hype sticker for fans of Cryptopsy, Demigod, and Morbid Angel. Yeah, early Cryptopsy. I wouldn't say any new Cryptopsy. Um, just brutal, brutal sounding death metal. It is crushing in riffs galore. And then it's got like that really good song structure of writing that they have just very... <sighs> They just write really good death metal is what I'm trying to say here. Um, I'm failing at words. Uh, again, it surprised me. Um, but it's definitely worthy of your attention. And this has one. This has been sitting on my like playlist. My, I stack vinyls up next to my record player. And I I've, I've definitely have played this at least several times a day for the last since I got it. It came out in September. So very, very good album. I cannot praise it enough. Um I want more people to listen to it. So definitely check this out. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Um, again, came out of nowhere. I didn't know anything about it. And just, and then all of a sudden it 
blew me away. So I love those. I love those unexpected surprises when it comes to releases for the year. You have your most anticipated releases that you cannot wait for, but then there's these ones that just come out of nowhere and they creep up on you and I, I'm a nerd. Anyway, number four, another one that I don't think is a surprise to anyone. That is Tetragram Aside. I'm just going to say Typo Tantric because the album name is really long and I'm not able to pronounce it correctly. Um, this is out on Iron Bonehead Records. This is black and death metal. Definitely that war metal chaos. Um, so, but I put it in the death metal album, um, list because it's definitely more death metal than anything. Um, just, again, another one I wasn't expecting to enjoy as much as I did. This is their second full-length album. They have a couple of demos and splits out. And the band is out of India. Um, just assaulting, aggressive, brutal, black and death metal. War metal, for sure, is in this. And... As soon as I heard this, it was like I got slammed in the face with a goddamn machete. Well, no, not a machete, uh, a sludge hammer. It was like, my God, this is so good. Um, <laughs> and I've since gone back and have bought their other albums um, because I really, really liked this one. And this is this is so good. Um, again, I was really shocked, especially... Iron Bonehead, generally, I associate Iron Bonehead more w with black metal, like the full-blown black metal, like Moonblood, and I think they've put out like a ton of, um, of course, I'm blanking on his name right now. He has a thousand albums out. It's there. Okay, I can't think of it right now. Um, Drowning the Light, whew, that was tough. Um, like, they put out albums like that, Black Sleeves, I've bought all my Black Sleeves albums through them, so I wouldn't necessarily, like, associate just in my brain. Some of you are probably watching this and I'm like, yeah, of course, but this, an album like this to come out, when I saw the album cover, I assumed it was probably a black metal album, kind of, or at least Black and Death, and that's exactly what it was, but I didn't expect it to be like this, so... I am blabbing now. This is a fantastic album. Um, I'm a huge fan of this band now. I'm so happy that I was able to get this on vinyl because this has been hard to get in the U.S. It sells out as soon as distros get it. Um, so if you're able to listen to this and if you're able to pick it up, definitely do so. Also, the CD version of this looks awesome. I actually kind of want it, so I might try to get that too. Um, but this vinyl pressing is so nice, and I did an unboxing and showed this off on my video on my channel a couple of weeks ago uh, when I finally got this so check this out if you have not and that is Tetragrammasi which by the way awesome freaking name uh, and the artwork in this is, is stellar so check them out that is my number four uh, my number three gives me goosebumps these are my three favorite death metal albums of the year it's been like that um, two of these have been like that for a while this third one did just come out in December, but I did get the promo and I meant to go look. Was it, it might have been sometime in October, late October, so it's been a while. And that is Cruciamentum with Obsidian Refractions. This is my number three out on Profound Lore. Um, this album is so goddamn good. Uh, it was really tough to pick this, pick between this and the two others I'm about to show. For a while there, I even was like, oh, this is my favorite death metal album of the year. But then I, I really had to kind of settle myself down because I got so excited when it first came out. And when, I first, when it first came out um, and just seeing all of the hype and people were starting to talk about it made me so happy because for several weeks before that, I was telling people, just wait, listen to this album, just wait, it's good. Don't solidify those urinals yet. This is going to rock your world. Trust me. And then they came into the decibel list and I was like, oh, okay. Well, they caught on. Good good job, guys. Um, and then it finally is out and, and that's the consensus that I'm seeing now. I also think Garrett from Spirit Adrift did a whole entire video about why this is some of the best death metal ever written, um, which is a really pretty good statement there. Uh, in terms of modern death metal, this is by far... One of the best death metal albums I've heard in recent years. Um, this band came out uh, of hiding. I guess you could say hibernation. Uh, their last album wasn't um, until, or wasn't, didn't, that yeah, came out back in 2015. It's been a while since they've released an album. So there was a little bit of high expectations here of like, what are they going to come back with? And they came back with a gem. 
an absolute gem. Um, I did a whole video on this. I, I don't know what else I can say. More I can say about it other than just go listen to it. Uh, if it doesn't click with you right away, that's totally okay. Everybody hears things differently. Uh, but it is so good. And I absolutely love this album. And I've been joking like, hey, put this in my will and bury me with it. <laughs> um, Charnel Passages is probably one of the best songs to be released this year. Um, and that's the album opener. It's just, it's a fantastic song. And then the rest of the album is is just as good. So check this out if you haven't yet. Um, again, it just came out not too long ago and I got some, I got some people being like, how, how are you saying this is, um, again, I had the promo. So, uh, but it is so good. So, so, so good. That's my number three easily on a different day could be my number two, my number one. Um, it, it's just one of the best coffee. Oh, talking makes my throat all gross. Okay. Number two. And the only reason why this is number two is because number one came out. All right. So, but this was my favorite album pretty much all year until this next one that I'm going to show you came out. And that is Cattle Decapitation with Terracite. So you guys know Cattle Decapitation is one of my all-time favorite bands. I love this band. I've loved them for a really long time. I obsess about them, about certain things. When they come out with a new album, I'm that person that obsesses about it. Uh, I tamed my hypeness for this because I wasn't sure what to expect. I really did like Death Atlas. I did. But I was a little bit worried that we were going to start getting the copy-paste Cattle Decapitation albums because they've, you know, the band's been out for a while and they've pumped out a lot of music in their, in their time. Um, so... And then it came out and it blew me away. And I think this is probably my favorite album behind Monolith of Inhumanity, which is just one of my all-time favorite death metal albums to begin with. Um, this is some of their best stuff that they've released uh, since at the Apothrocene. I can never goddamn death metal albums. Um, and that album was very good. I think I might put this up above anthropothecine extinction i can never say that like even my friend paul who's like a huge cattle decapitation fan taught me how to say it and i still can't do it thank god i'm not an english major um <laughs> uh but yeah so album artwork is done by west ben scotter who is a legend in the scene in regards to album art and just an overall amazing artist and a lot of people dogged on this album art they thought it was just stupid um i mean yeah it's not their best but again I really enjoy it now that it's been out for a while. Um, so, yeah. And the music itself is, it's definitely Cattle Decapitation, but they add a little bit more layer to their music on this album that they haven't had in their past albums. There's a little bit more of the, the doomier side of things on here that they've never really put into their sound. Um, and just the overall flow beginning to end is so good. And I think this is Travis Ryan's, one of his best vocal performances on an album by far. And then seeing it live this year also solidified that. The guy is a monster. He has just some of the best vocals in death metal. Um, and this album is fantastic. Uh, there is um, just a full-on like transition from song to song to song, starting from the storm upstairs, which is the fifth song all the way to the final song, just another body that just puts me in a lot of a trance. And I'm just like, Oh yeah, this is so good. <laughs> um, so if you haven't heard this yet, if you've been putting it off because of even just the album cover, I get over it, go listen to it, especially if you're a cow decapitation fan. Um, like I said, I think this is probably one of their best albums in their discography now. Um, and that's saying a lot because I do love the harvest floor. And like I said, model of inhumanity is like my, all, one of my all time favorite albums. Um, but this definitely is such a progression from death Atlas. So if death Atlas deterred you a little bit, come back and listen to this album. Uh, I cannot say, like, I cannot say anymore. I can't say words anymore. I can't. I'm just, it's such a good album. So anyway, this is out on Metal Blade Records. Um, and if you're not familiar, the band is from the U.S. They're most notably known for a lot of their grindcore earlier albums, uh, but they definitely are more of that death metal sound now. Um, they do have a little bit of the grindcore elements here and there, but I definitely hear more um, 
death metal these days, especially on this album. So it's fantastic. I'm done talking about it. I love this album. It was my number one for a very long time. And I've been saying it all year. It's going to be cattle. It's going to be cattle. And then, and then these MFers, these motherfuckers come <laughs> out of nowhere. I mean, not really out of nowhere. I had the, I got the promo for it, um, way back before the album came out, like almost a month or two before the album came out, which was Good on you, Willow Tip, for getting that out there. And that is, of course, Afterbirth within, but not of. I can never, I always say that incorrectly too. Um, this album blew me away. And a lot of people are probably like, really? Because I know a lot of the criticism and I've seen a lot of it in people's reviews and I've listened to, I've watched YouTube videos and I've seen tweets about it. I don't have any of that. Um, so if you're not familiar with this band, they are from the U.S., I think the New York area. This is their, uh, third full-length album. And their last two albums, Four Dimensional Flesh and The Time Traveler's Dilemma, were fantastic albums. I became a huge fan of them when they, when they released Four Dimensional Flesh, which was back in 2020. It was something I'd never really heard before. It was very unique. And at the time, I donned it as, that's kind of a mood album for me. I don't know if I'm always going to listen to that. And then that ended up not being true. I pulled that album off my shelf and listened to it a lot. And then they released this album back in October. I got the promo for it, I think at the beginning of, um, at the end of August and early September. And I kind of sat down and didn't listen to it for about a week or two. And then I finally did. And I was not expecting, I knew that they were going to be like the weird, proggy, brutal death metal that they are. Uh, but this is leaps and bounds better than their last album. The songwriting on this is spectacular. Spectacular. Uh, so this is definitely progressive, brutal death metal, technical brutal death metal. So it's it's a blend of a lot of different death metal genres. You've got progressive death metal. You've got brutal death metal. You've got technical death metal. And you've got brutal technical death metal. All on one album. It's like they got in the studio and they said, hey, what what kind of death metal album do we want to write today? And they just all said, yes, all of them. <laughs> um, and when I first heard it, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is good. It's fun. It's engaging. It's different. It's unique. And then after that, every single day I've listened to this. Every single day I have listened to this since September. Every single day. This has been the album that every night when I'm going to pick up my kids... Uh, from their after school activities and stuff like that, I put it on and I listened to it. And I was getting uh, really anxious because the vinyl pressing got delayed just because of the color variant that I ordered was, was delayed because it takes a little bit longer to make. And I just wanted it physically so I could listen to it in my office on my stereo. And I was tired of the digital release, but it finally came and I'm super happy. Um, but in regards to the music, <clears throat> so if you haven't heard this yet, it is definitely that brutal death metal, like pig squeal vocals of Will Smith and not, no, not the Will Smith that got that bitch slapped Chris Rock. Um, it is Will Smith who is also, was also an artificial brain. Um, this is his, I think he's done with artificial brain. Anyway, um, he's got that gurgly brutal death metal vocal throughout the whole entire album with a couple exceptions of like faster parts where they're high pitched screaming. Um, and it goes over this progressive death metal and it kind of is a weird mix. And some people can't get past the vocal passages of that. They think it's kind of weird to be putting it on top of progressive death metal. But for me, it just works perfectly. Like it, something in my brain is wired to love weird death metal. And this is a, definitely a weirder death metal album. Um, but it's, it's just, I can't talk about it enough. Um, I think what really, like the first three, four songs, the first five songs are very good and they're heavy and they're crushing and then they kind of slow down a little bit, a little bit more prog -ier. Um, Those are more of the crushing death metal songs. And then when we get to song six, which I'm donning as like one of my favorite al songs to come out this year, Hovering Human Head Drones. <laughs> uh, ew, God. It's so good. I have it in my head right now. Like if I was comfortable enough, I would sing it to you. <laughs> I am not. Um, and then from the whole entire side B of this album, it is just pristine in oh, such good guitar tones and just proggy. And it does so much 
goosebumps to me, like so much goosebumps to me. What am I even saying right now? It just, it gives me goosebumps and it just, it's seamless and it flows. And it's, like I said, that progressive death metal, but then it adds that layer of brutal death metal that I love, which the brutal death metal style of music that I love is, is the gurgly piggy squeal type of vocals. Like that's what draws me to it. And they put that on top of this. So they put those vocals on top of progressive death metal. And it's like, they just put two of my absolute favorite death metal uh, components together and created a perfect 10 out of 10 album, in my opinion. Um, again, I know it's not for everybody. I've seen a lot of the criticism or, or just saying like, hey, like the musicianship is good. Like the music is good. It's the vocals that I can't get over. And I totally get that. Like it's not for everybody. But for me, this has been just an amazing <laughs> experience. Um, I get like this... Uh, sadness of like man I kind of wish I this was like one of the first few times I heard it again like to get that um dopium rush you know um but again I love this album and I'm just so so happy it's out so I'm hoping I'm hoping I can uh get the t-shirt because I love this album artwork but they are sold out of my my size so please guys restock that um and again this is on Willow Tip Records so Check it out. I'm not expecting everybody to say that they love this album. And I know that some people are going to disagree on this. But hey, this is my list. So it's my number one. And it's been my number one for a while. Um, amazing stuff. Good job, guys. You wrote an amazing album. Um, and I'm so excited for what they're going to do in the future. Uh, because, again, I like that weird death metal. And they're just, they're fantastic musicians. Uh, and they write really, really good music. And there's a lot of influence in here that I hear on this album, like where they're pulling these sounds from. Um, hopefully we can do like a more deeper dive on the album uh, later this year. I'm planning on trying to set something up to talk more in depth about it. So that is my top 10 albums of 2023. Were there any surprises in here? I'm probably guessing some people are going to be surprised about at least Fuming Mouth. Um, maybe the rest, not so much. Um, what are your top 10? Uh, put them in the description or the comments. Let me know what your favorite albums were this year. Let me know what I missed in, in all of my top death metal uh, releases. I know I missed a lot. There was a lot of things that came out the year that I that I was not able to listen to. And again, I've said it in every video. This is my favorite time of the year. I love year end lists because I always find new music. I always find new bands to listen to. People recommend stuff and it's just, it's awesome. So uh, thank you guys for a fantastic year. This has been one of the most, uh, successful years in my YouTube, uh, career, my career on YouTube as a content creator. Uh, my growth has just shot up way beyond whatever I thought it was going to be. I think when I started out the year, I was not averaging the views or anything like that, that I am now. So I'm very grateful for that. If you're new to the channel, you like what you, what you, what you want to, if you like my videos, you can go ahead and subscribe. I'm not going to say, Hey, you should, you should subscribe. Just if you'd like them, subscribe. Um, subscribers I know really don't technically matter, but I like to build a community here, uh, and have people that I can talk to daily about good music. So uh, more videos will be coming this year. This is not the final one. I'm going to make several other ones of like my favorite EPs and splits and my favorite death metal songs on the year. And then I'm going to do a death metal artwork one. I've seen a couple other people doing the artwork stuff and I thought that was a cool idea. So I'm stealing it naturally. That's what YouTubers do. Um, but yes. Uh, and then there will be a giveaway. I will announce that on December 31st. So it's a good one. It's a vinyl this time. So it's a good one. That's all that I have. And I will see you guys in the next one.